myself, I am Candice Chu, the first year clinical pathology resident. And I know a lot of pe people like would start to think like, why is she doing here? <laughs> She's the first year resident. But actually before uh, being a resident, I was a PhD, PhD student here for the past four years. So during my PhD, I have done like several slide presentations uh, either like internally or in national conferences. So I think I had some experience in how to prepare a good slide presentation that I can share with you today. And we also have like uh, five short practice sections that you can practice those techniques on your own. Then we can discuss as a group. So um, first I would like to talk about the concept. Let me find a laser point. The concept of slide presentation, for me, I think a good presentation has three major factors, uh, which is clarity, appearance, and the topic. And by clarity, uh, I mean that you should have less words as possible on your slide. Uh, I know that a lot of people would feel like you should put as much as you want to say on the slide, but actually as an audience, especially as like like me, I'm like easily distracted audience. So I prefer <laughs> the slide to have less words on it so I can like stay focused. And the second part is the appearance. So I prefer to see slides that are beautiful. I think we are all sick of slides that have like blue background and yellow titles <laughs> and white words. Every time I see those slides, I'll be like, oh my God, again. So I'm I hope that everybody starting from today, you can try to de develop your own presentation style and use beautiful pictures in your presentation. Also, the last part of the topic, sorry, you can't really do anything about it. You can try to make it more interesting, but a lot of times that's your like, scientific research. So uh, in this presentation, I'm going to uh, present several of my own slides in my previous presentation, and this is my research, uh, which is like, comparison of methods for preparation biofluids in dogs for microRNA sequencing. So when you first see the title, you notice that there are some like unfamiliar words like microRNA and sequencing. So I would definitely talk about it as the background and the beginning of my presentation. So think about scientific presentation. You have like background, knowledge gap, method, results, discussion, and conclusion. And a lot of times people would think that results and discussion and conclusion are the most important part. But actually, for me, as an easily distracted audience, I feel like background knowledge gap and method is the most important part. Because if during the first five or 10 minutes of my presentation, your presentation, if I couldn't understand you, then I completely lost my interest. So that's why I would focus um, most of the time on these three sections during my presentation today. So think about if you're going to do a, a scientific presentation right now, what would be the first thing you do? Like you, like you already have like everything. Yeah, like you have your material. For example, you have your manuscript, then you're going to do a presentation. What would be the first thing you do? Yeah, yeah, that's like a very good idea to make it online first, even before you open up your PowerPoint software. But I think for a lot of people, the first thing you do is just click on the PowerPoint, and then <laughs> you may also start to like, oh, which format I want to use today. <laughs> but I think that's not a very good approach because sometimes your presentation style and the format will be confined by the um, artistic style that you choose at the beginning. So for me, my preferred approach is to open a word and I will start to type down everything I want to say in this talk. And if I did it, maybe not 100%, but at least like 80% of it, and once I did it, I will start to divide them into different paragraphs and even uh, divide them into different sentences so I can decide like which sentences would be on my PowerPoint presentation. So for example, the background part, um, 
would be your first practice. Like these would be the sentences that I have in my Word document. And once I compete, uh, copy and paste them onto the PowerPoint, then I start to think about how can I make it shorter, make it more clear for my audience to understand. So that would be your first practice is to um, follow the logic and show just one thing at a time with the animation and also try to uh, concentrate your ideas to three points per slide. So let's start to do it. How can you modify practice one? Hey, okay, awesome. So I'm just gonna share my modification and it doesn't have to be the perfect one, but just like as an example of how to shorten it. So in my presentation, I would be like, hey, microRNA is a small 25, 21 to 25 uh, nucleotide long non-coding RNA. And I would talk about its function is by binding to the mRNA, maybe verbally saying that it's binding to the three prime UDR and will lead to degradation of the mRNA. And also I would talk about multiple mRNA targets, like one microRNA can bind to multiple mRNA tar targets and one mRNA target can be bound by multiple microRNA. So just an example of how to shorten it, but still cover um, most of the content on the slide. All right. So uh, to the next part, uh, the first part we talk about how to make it shorter and only show one thing at a time and keep it as three main points per slide. And the second part of the talk, we're going to talk about how to incorporate more pictures, especially high quality pictures in your slide presentation. So uh, for this part, I would like to use knowledge gap as an example because when I think of knowledge gap, like I like to visualize everything. So I think of knowledge gap, picture you, uh, image in your mind, maybe like you see virtually there's a gap between mountains and there's men try to cross the gap. So there, is some Im there would be some image that you can use in your presentation. So trying to find that image online. The first thing most people do would just go to Google image and type down gap, you wouldn't find. But not surprised, <laughs> you'll find a lot of gap, like this one. But there are some tools that can help us filter out the pictures on Google image. I don't know if you have used it before, but I'm going to introduce you how to use it. So if you click, there's a tool button on the top of the screen right here. And you can just try Google image by yourself on your computer right now so you can follow along the talk. Right? There is a button called tool. And if you click on it, there are several options you can choose from for usage rights. Because not every picture, um, most of the picture have their own copyrights and you could not just use them in your PowerPoint. So it's better to click on the usage rights and <coughs> click on whatever you like. In this example, I will click on the most liberal one is labeled for reuse with modification. So you can like, feel easily freely to use this image because its copyright is like at the lowest level. And then after that, you also want to click on size and click on large. Make sure you get, you get large, beautiful pictures. So by now, you have less the gap gap, but you have more other pictures. And you even have like anion gap picture, which you don't want to use in your talk. But this one, like this one, yeah, this is possible that we can use in your talk. It's kind of like a man crossing the gap. But overall, based on our search results, I think my conclusion would be Google stocks, like you can't really find good pictures in your Google image search. So I'm going to introduce you several good websites that you can find high quality free pictures. The first one is on Splash. You can try to type down its name and Google it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Okay. 
So on Flash, if you search gap, then you find more useful pictures that convey concepts you can use in your slide presentation. And also there's another website called Pixabay. They also provide stunning free images for you to use in your talk. Okay, once you go to this website, you search gap and you find more pictures. And what's interesting is that Pixabay also lists pictures from a um, non-free uh, website, which is called uh, Shutterstock. So if you click on any of them, they will lead you to Shutterstock's website and you need to pay for those pictures. But sometimes you'll feel like these pictures are better than these pictures. But that's also depends on your personal preference. So for me, I feel like all oh, this snail perfectly um, describe my mind in crossing the knowledge gap in my research. So for example, if I want to use it, I'll download it, put it in my slide, and maybe like horizontally flip, flip it so that my logic, um, my image can follow my logic when I present my idea. So I will start from here, going back to my research, I always said the reason why I do this research because we only have low RNA concentration in limited volume of the biofluids in dogs. But then if I can optimize the RNA isolation method, then I can get adequate RNA concentration from my limited sample. Then that would be the knowledge gap that I cross in my study. So just a simple visual tools that you can use to uh, express your idea. All right, so the second part of more picture is the use of icons. I like, I'm like super big fan of using icons. For example, um, you can use it uh, most likely in your method section or in your case presentation when you talk about the subject. For example, a boring case presentation would be like, hey, I'm going to talk about case. That is a 12-year-old Labrador retriever mix with a lesser G anorexia, poor body condition, and have anemia and leukocytosis noted by the uh, referring DVM. But with the use of icon, you can make it more attractive and more vivid for your audience. So like, hey, this is definitely a dog, even though you're not paying attention, you know that I'm talking about dog, and it's probably a Labrador retriever. And also, it does not feel well it has a lethargy, anorexia, and poor body condition. And also I point out there is some blood work that has already been done by the RDVN. You see blood and report. And I also talk about it has anemia and leukocytosis. So these are the way that you can make your presentation much better than just having words on your slide. So where are you going to find those beautiful icons? This is the first website. Icon Finder. I thought you made those. No, <laughs> I'm not that talented. <laughs> All right. And also, there are second website, iconstore.co. This one is also very good. <laughs> Got it? Yes, you're supposed to be free. And also, the Noun Project. This is my favorite icon website. It's almost like mostly free, but if you're going to use it as a free icon, then you have to keep the credit to the author below your picture. There's a line like created by someone, someone. Then you need to keep that in your presentation. But you can also pay for it and it's like completely uh, usable in, even in your like, research article you want to public to journal, then is, it is also okay to use. And the reason why this is my favorite icon website is because it can be incorporated in your PowerPoint software. 
So you don't have to have your Google Chrome browser here and have your PowerPoint here. You can actually search for those icons in your PowerPoint. I'm going to teach you how to do it. So going back to your PowerPoint, and I'm using a Mac, but I, I'm guessing it must be similar between Mac and Windows. So there's the button called My Add-ins. Have you found it? It's under Insert and in My Add-ins. And click on See All. And it should lead you to a new window that has all the office add-ins and you can search for it. So just type now in the num project. Once you type it, and then the icons by non project jumps up and just <coughs> click on add. It will show up also under your insert tab and at the very end of the software. And if you click on that, you can start to search different icons in the noun project. And more icons will show up if you create an account and log in to this website by clicking on his, this button. But for now, we can try like uh, um, other free icons. For example, if you type computer, then you have like starter pack that has like two different computers. And what's nice about these icons is that although they're all black and white right now, but once you click on the icon you want to use, you can actually change the color. Yeah, so the color can match your presentation style. Then I could I like to move on to the next step, which is to make it consistent in your talk by making sure you have good alignments and good colors. So first, I would like to talk about alignment. I know it's great to have diagrams in your research article, but a lot of times when I see diagram like this, I'll be like, oh, like it drives me crazy. Because you have different artistic style for different picture, like the kidney and the bone and the cell, like they're all different. And also, you have different types of arrows. This one does not have a borderline or have a blue borderline, but this one has a black borderline. And also look at the alignment of the square and the word. Like you have different spacing between a word and a square. And like those arrows are not aligned properly. So like there are a lot of things that would drive me crazy because I'm an OCD person. <laughs> seeing the graph is also like seeing the OCD test that Emily wanted to point out like, number two, you are not aligned <laughs> perfectly. <laughs> and also like the third triangle, like you're much lower than the rest of us. Like, they all drive me crazy. OK, so I'm going to show you how to do proper alignment in PowerPoint. So for example, you have the practice number two, which you can practice for manual alignment. I think it's like pretty easy for you because you do it every day. Right? Yes. So you probably like click on this circle and you drag it till you see those two red lines. And you also move it a little bit till you see these two arrows. So you know that, hey, they are aligned properly and have like the same internal space between each circle. I know it looks like pretty easy You see that I know how to do it already. Like I've been doing it in the past 10 years in my life. But what if you have all these symbols you want to align? What if you have tons of them? Then how would you do it? So there is actually a way you can automatically do it in your PowerPoint. 
going up to your toolbar, there is a uh, triangle here. And click on the triangle. And once you click on it, I want you to choose all comments. And I want you to find all the comments start with a line. And also, also two comments called distribute horizontally and distribute vertically. Once you found those, I want you to click all of them and click this arrow to move them to the right side so that they will show up on your toolbar. So it looks like most of you already got those options. You can also try the practice three. I have like another three circles. Trying to align them by the center and make sure they have the same inter space between each circle. Okay. So it's pretty easy. You just have to select all the circles and then hit align center and it will align by itself. And then you can also click on distribute vertically then you will have the same spacing between each circle. That's like super easy. The next part, I would like to talk about colors. I think colors is like, can be whole another lecture, semester long lecture in college course. But I just like to briefly talk about colors in slide presentation. So why is color important? Like, you can use whatever color you want, but a lot of times your research software will make pictures for you. And then what if, what if like later in your talk and you found that some of the number are off and how can you use the right color to correct your figure? For example, if I found, oh shoot, this is not eight, it should be nine then what should you do? So I can easily create a new circle, but it's in different color. And I can't just move the circle over this and correct the number, because that would be very ugly. So how can I do? So first, you can select, just make like whatever circle you want. You can select the circle and then go to the color option, click on the color, and click on more field colors. You don't have these pictures in your um, practice, but you can make a new circle or make whatever object you want, and then try to do this practice. So you can click on more field colors, and then click on the second options where you have like three color bar and a color number here. But I want you to click on the pipette symbol. Okay, eyedropper. Right. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> okay, so click on the eyedropper and then move on to the picture or to wherever it is on the same screen and then this tool will capture, capture the color you like and then found that color for you. And notice that for the new color you found, they will have a hex color number for you to use for future references. So in that case, I can change the color of the, this circle, and I can type down the right number and move the circle over the old number. And it should be the same color, but somehow it's still a little bit different right now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. So if we have only one color in mind, how can we find other colors that will show up beautifully with the color we like? So there is a new tool, you can Google it, it's Adobe Color Wheel. Once you go to the website, you 
scroll the page down, and you can click the central color, and there should be a place where you can put the RGB number or the hex color number here, and the color will change into the color that you want to match. And also, on the left side of the screen, there are different matching systems that you can use. If you don't like them to be all red, you can click on other options as well. So, let's do a little practice with practice four. I give you three books with the same color, but I want you to use the Adobe color wheel to change the color of the other two books, but they are still like beautifully staying together on the same screen. So here's the color that I chose from the color wheel. Just provide an example of this practice. All right. So right now is our last practice. We have the old slide from the practice one, the one that you have already modified. And I want you to find icons to visualize the presentation for practice one. So just utilize whatever you have learned in today's lecture <coughs> and do the practice. All right, now it's time to see what we have learned in today's lecture. So the first one um, does not change a lot, but just add like a new symbol before each bullet point. The second one would have some new pictures to express each bullet point. And my suggest suggestion would be um, if you have a picture that has a black background, maybe consider change your whole presentation to be black <coughs> so that you don't have this awkward background here. And if you have animation, you can show up one thing at a time. And also remember to use the tool to align those three bullet points. <laughs> Why do you have my dog? <laughs> this is my dog, Toby, which is obviously the focus of this microRNA talk. <laughs> All right, very creative. Yeah. 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 Okay. This, is, this one is also cool. And um, so my suggestion for this one is, like, I like these two icons, but I think oftentimes in slide presentation, you would try to have pictures on your slide, but that picture does not relate to your bullet points. Yes. <laughs> so I hope that if you have this icon, then that bullet point better to be something related to medicine. Yes, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, and if you have this test tube, this is good. Maybe you can talk about it with like, I'm trying to isolate in my RNA from biofluids. Then that would be very relevant. Okay, this one, I like this one, because this is free. This is a free icon. And I don't know like, why this is here. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but I like this. Sometimes you can find high quality icons with this like circle and green backgrounds, and I really like it. And this one is pretty cool too. Yeah, because you have like title, and you have like research background. And you have like three bullet points. And you can use some animation so that you can show up one bullet point at a time that people can follow your talk while looking at the slide. And my suggestion would be making this picture big enough to cover the whole slide. 
So I apologize now being able to go through all your practice slides uh, yesterday, but now here are the additional cases. And these are all very good, so I would like to show them to you. So the first one is great that we have like different types of icons. However, there is no description below each icon, so it would be difficult for audience to follow, follow through the whole talk if they got distracted at some point and want to go back to continue, they won't be able to know, okay, what is the pencil icon and what we are talking about at this point. All right. The second one uh, is more the uh, traditional slide presentation that you have your title and you have like different types of pictures just like uh, covering your whole slides. So my suggestion uh, would be to replace these two pictures uh, with icons and probably this micro RNA picture with icons as well so that you have a consistent style in your presentation. The next one, I really like this one, um, that we have like title below each icon and we have different icon that sort of tied to the meaning of the title. And here is the uh, another work that we have icons and they all have the same style, at least color-wise, they're all black and white. And we also have this plus and this arrow symbols to show the uh, binding of microRNA with the mRNA and cause mRNA to degrade. So I really like this presentation. My suggestion would be those two arrows, they are in bright red color with black uh, border lines. I think it would be better if we can replace the style and the color of these two symbols. And the next one, I think this is the best one, that we have different icons for different topics and they all have been changed in the same color. So um, visually, they are very consistent and more beautiful. My uh, only suggestion would be to make sure these titles line up correctly so that it's more consistent. And so here I'm just showing my example the way I did in my presentation, but it certainly takes more time than 10 minutes. So just like providing an example for that. So I'll say microRNA are small, 21 to 25 nucleotide long, non-coding RNA, and they function in a way by binding to mRNAs, and usually uh, when it binds to mRNA, the mRNA is degraded. So one microRNA can bind to multiple mRNA, and each mRNA can be the target of multiple microRNA and it constitutes a very complex n network. So this is a, just an example of how we can present our scientific background in a way that's much easier for people to understand. And also like what we can use in the method section is if we list everything out, then it's like pretty boring and people will not be able to remember. For example, if I talk about like serine and urine from seven carrier female dogs with this specific disease, Using 10 mil of urine, we test three isolation methods. Two mil of serine, we test the other three isolation methods. And use small RNA sequencing of two library preparation and analyze our data by these two methods. And by this point, you already feel like super bored and like you can't remember anything else, anything at all. So my way of presenting the method in my talk is I would show up like, hey, we have a dog and we sample the serine and the urine, the next step is we compare six RNA isolation methods, three for urine, three for serine. And also, we also compare two library preparation methods. After all, we use CP CPSS 2.0 and de 2 to analyze our data. And also, when I talk about small RNA sequencing or microRNA sequencing workflow, it is like very, it is a very complicated idea Usually you have a diagram and you talk about, first we start with the RNA preparation, 
we isolate and purify the RNA, then we do the library preparation, and then we sequence our sample, and we analyze our data. But it is still pretty boring, although it's relatively easy to understand by using a flow chart. So my approach would be showing my icon, which is I repetitively showed out in my talk. I will talk about doing RNA isolation. So you got a pool of RNA sequence. And then in your library preparation, you make them into cDNA. You also add adapters at the both sides of your RNA reads. And during the sequence, the complementary nucleotide bind to your sequence, having a fluorescent signal to be a raw data. And after the analysis, you'll be able to know which microRNA bind to which part of your mRNA. So just wrapping up our, our talk today, first, I think the important point is to realize how backgrounds, knowledge gaps, and methods are important for your audience and important for your talk. The second part is how we can put last words on our PowerPoint slide by following the logic, just showing one thing at a time, and keep it down to three major points per slide. The last part is to have more pictures, especially high quality pictures, high quality icons, and also to make sure you are consistent throughout your presentation with your alignments and the colors you chose. So that's the whole presentation. And again, I put out my email here. My office just at the second floor, the clinical pathology lab. So if you have, have any questions, just shoot me an email or you can like discuss with me by the end of this talk. And hope you enjoy my talk today. Thank you.